Hi, I'm Andrew with uh, Cody Manufacturing. Today we're going to talk about different in-feed options of how to get cans empty into a filling machine. There's a variety of different ways that you can do this. The most important thing to think about is that the more money you spend up front, the lower your labor costs are. So if you have the opportunity, this footprint, and the budget to get a full height depalletizer, saves a tremendous amount of labor, automates a lot of the process. Whether you start with a DPL 250 or you need the speeds of our DPL 1000, we still consider it all depalletizer semi-automated. They're not truly walk-away machines. The main reason is, is that cans love to tip down from time to time. When a can tips down, you need to go up on a little platform. You have to address the fallen can, make sure that the cans keep flowing smoothly. And depending on the speed that the filler is running will dictate how often you're going to have to change out your pallet, and that is still a manual nature. So no matter what you spend, we're always going to try to use the term semi-automated. Now, a lot of people don't have the upfront capital. They don't have the footprint, or they need a little bit more movability. So they're gonna look at other options to get the cans into the filler. The smallest footprint, least expensive option on the market is a whale tail. A whale tail essentially is a large metal trough. There's no moving parts on it. It at, is at an incline. You take a half stack pallet of cans, you move it up to the edge of the whale tail. Oftentimes you'll pull the slip sheet just over the edge of the whale tail. And then you'll physically push the cans from behind and they'll slide down the chute just using gravity. Very small footprint, very low cost. There's not much fancy automation going on in the process. There's a region the price is so low, and that is because you're going to spend a lot in labor. We consider the whale tail one person 100% of the time. As the cans are traveling from flat on the pallet and they have to make that tip to go onto the whale tail, they often will knock down and fall over in that location. So you're going to have a body there standing, kind of addressing the fallen cans. And then as they're single filing down to enter into the filling system, they are, sometimes there's a little bit too much friction. They're going to get stuck up on the side. So you're kind of nudging the cans the whole time. We consider best practice to be wearing gloves. So you can put your fingers on the inside of the can and you're not getting your hands in there. One of the downsides of a whale tail is that there's no pre-rinse functionality. Cans come sterilized from the manufacturer, but if you buy them through a small run can supply company that is going to pre-shrink sleeve your cans or sell you a small quantity, they're going to be touched through different parts of the process, so you don't know if they're completely sterile by the time they come to your facility. If you store your cans in an area where the general public has access to it, you don't know if a kid grabbed a can off the pallet, put a little Lego piece in there, and then put it right back on the pallet. So not knowing what's inside the can obviously has detrimental effects on your ability to trust everything that's inside there once you actually put product in it. So pre-rinsing the cans is kind of suggested in most industries and really preferred to ensure that they're as sterile as possible. We started with the whale tail is the least expensive smallest footprint. If you decide that you need a small footprint, you need it to be economical, but you really want to pre-rinse the cans, the best option is the hand-fed twist rinse. The hand-fed twist rinse is a very short version of a twist rinse that's going to apply to the canner right here. It has an L bracket at the end that you can manually place roughly 10 cans at a time. And as you place them in that location, they'll begin to use gravity to slide down, get the pre-rinse, invert themselves so that they enter into the system. Remember, every can from Cody requires a unique twist rinse. So you will be purchasing one hand-fed twist rinse for every can size that you need with your filler and included in the cost of the twist rinse, we're gonna give you your seamer height pins. So the cost of the twist rinse applies the overall cost to adjust the can height size change to adjust your entire system. The biggest benefit of the hand feed is once again how small it is and the low cost. The negative, it's still one person 100% of the time. One of the other options that we're asked about all of the time is having a twist rinse 
hooked to a whale tail. Now, this isn't necessarily our favorite option. And the reason being is that you have a couple different component trees here. Most people imagine that the whale tail is going to remove some of the labor. But as I spoke about before, the cans tipping is still a problem. And instead of the cans tipping at this low height, which would be roughly 40 inches, top height of about 44, 46 inches, now you've raised it up in the air even taller. So now you're up on a ladder all of the time and you're addressing those cans as they potentially tip over and go into the whale tail. So it's not very ergonomical. Potentially it's not very safe depending on the, the ladder setup that you have. And that's kind of the, one of the reasons that's not our favorite design. We do it for a number of customers that really like that application. Um, the price is pretty good. Still 100% of the time that you need somebody there. And once again, you will be changing out those twist trenches between each use. If you want to start to get into a little bit of automation in this process, one of the designs that we have is our single filer on wheels. This is probably one of our most preferred options right now for people that are mobile canning, for people that have footprints that they need to set up at their facility when they're running and then pack everything away into a corner when they're not running or people that just want to save a little bit of money up front, invest in a really good filler seamer, but they need to save a little bit of money on the in-feed and out-feed and have the ambitions to grow into a full-grade commercial system in the future, the single filer on wheels is a really nice application for that. In essence, it accepts a half-stack pallet of cans. You butt the half-stack up to a conveyor belt. You're going to pull the ends of the slip sheet just onto the conveyor belt and then you manually push the cans from behind to enter onto that conveyor. The conveyor belt will feed either to the left or to the right. It'll take the cans from a mass flow area down to four, three, two, one. That's why we call it the single filer. It's creating a single file of cans. Once the cans are in a single row, then it can jump into a twist rinse. The twist rinse will take it from that height directly down into the filler. Once again, one twist rinse per size. For all the applications I've talked about before, we're only going to mount one twist rinse at a time because most of the heights are about just above the head height to about the hip height, so it's pretty easy to adjust those and take those on and off. On a single filer, <coughs> excuse me. On a single filer, you have the opportunity to add a date code bump out rail. And what that affords you is it is a dry location for date coding and is relatively consistent speed for date coding. And it uh, tucks the date coder up and away so that it's not nudged and it takes up the least amount of footprint. So that's a pretty popular option for date code locations in a very simple setup like that. All of the options that we've talked about so far only work with a half stack pallet of cans. When we're getting into a more automated version and but you still want to have mobility, Cody Manufacturing has the option of selling a DPL 250 that is a half height and on casters. We consider it our mobile depalletizer. From Cody Manufacturing, if you purchase a standard height depal, a half height depal, a tall, a squat, or any custom height that you choose, we do it for the same price across the board for everybody because we cut so much metal here at this facility, the cost of metal is not that big of a factor as much as the automation and engineering time it takes to design everything. So whatever ceiling heights that you have, we're gonna figure out the best solution based on the standing height, the operator height, the height of the actual ceiling, and how many cans that you actually have. Just communicate that with your sales professional and we'll get you a solution that works perfectly. The operation of a depalletizer, whether it is a half height or a full height is very simple. A single filer is placed on this location. The cans enter in from here. There is a light curtain on each side, or you can elect to have a full door enclosure. A Cody depalletizer has three solid walls so that there's no opportunity for a cross breeze to tip cans, and it makes it a lot more sterile of a process, and it allows the cans to travel up and down uh, with less damage potentially happening. It's important to note that a Cody depalletizer 
any moving parts that happen directly above where the cans are orientated in the depalletizer. There are no greased parts on that system. There are no screw drives that require grease. It should always be avoided to have anything that could potentially drip grease from the top of an empty can into a can because you've worked really hard to make excellent products. You don't want grease to go into that product and have the consumer taste it. So we have engineered with more expensive components to ensure that there is nothing that could potentially drip down into the empty cans themselves. The, once the top, uh, once the cans are entered in, they're gonna be raised up automatically. It's important to note that you can use a pilot jack to move the cans in and out of place. It is a U-shaped bend that is grabbing the bottom of the pallet, so there's no reason to use a forklift to lift it up and in. It can just go flat from the bottom. You're gonna remove the picture frame, which is that top rack that goes around the top of a pallet. You physically remove that. You cut the side straps. You remove the cling wrap, if there is cling wrap. Enter the cans, hit the green button for go. It's gonna raise it up. Your slip sheet grabber is going to move into place, grab that first slip sheet and move it back. It will release the slip sheet, and we have a variety of options of how you can stack those slip sheets. As these slip sheets are gathered in this area, there's also a swing arm or a, a push arm that's gonna push the backside of the cans onto this conveyor belt. The conveyor belt, once again, is gonna move from four, three, two, one, single file the cans, enter in, and then hook up to your twist rinse that's gonna go right into your filler. Going back to talking about the single file around wheels, one of the reasons that that's so attractive to our customers right now is that it is the identical componentry that we use on the top side of a depalletizer, which means if you start with a single file around wheels and then you elect in the future to purchase a full height depalletizer, a half height depalletizer or a tall depal, we're gonna reuse that componentry, which means the cost of the single file around wheels will be subtracted from the cost of purchasing a depalletizer in the future so you're really investing in automation in your future. If you come to me and you say, I just have enough to buy your filler and a little bit of extra money for some type of infeed, I'm always gonna promote the single filer with a whale tail, or sorry, a single filer with a twist trance, and then give you a design of what maybe in six months or six years down the road, you wanna get some automation to it. We're gonna get you a full height depalletizer. We're gonna reuse that single filer. We're gonna mount it up here Unfortunately, the short twist rinse that we use for a single file around wheels will not work for a twist rinse on a depalletizer, so we will be replacing those twist rinses. The DPL250 standard setup um, is capable of running at 250 cans per minute. Cody has been in the depalletizer and conveyance business for 30 years, and we have options that go up to 1,000 cans per minute. On a depalletizer, you have a twist rinse coming down, one twist rinse per size. If you're going to go with two different twist rinses or two different can sizes, generally we're going to elect to have the two twist rinses sitting right next to each other. You can have a water rinse on both. If you choose to have ionized air, we can have the ionized air system slide between the two sizes so you don't have to buy two ionized air setups. You can actually just have it movable. If you have three can sizes, we can mount three twist trenches in a row. What we would have is a single lane going over to the three twist trenches, and then we'll have a lane conveyor coming at the end of the three twist trenches that enter into the filler. So it always usually is gonna come in at about a 90 degree angle. We can also do that with four can sizes as well. With four can sizes, there is the opportunity to have two standard twist trenches coming down and two C-track twist trenches that's what we call like our four-way uh, connection. And that gives you the ability to send cans in different orientations and keep the whole layout very compact. When you are a co-packer or you're a brand that's gonna have more than four can sizes, that's when you get into some of our really specialty equipment. The specialty equipment that is adaptable between every can size that's most popular would be our Lower Raider S Gripper. The Lower Raider S Gripper is a 
device that takes the cans from the top height of a single filer and enters it into the deck height of the filler. But instead of using a gravity-fed twist wrench, it's going to use two conveyor belts that are grabbing the can on the side. It enters the can down. It inverts the can underneath so that you can spray with water or sani, and then brings it back upright to enter into the filling machine. It is important that it is required to have a original height depalletizer or a tall version. Because of the S nature of the low rater, you cannot do it on a short version. It just doesn't have the clearance to make all of the turns. The S gripper low rater has one of the conveyor belts that is stationary, and one of the conveyor belts can be moved in and out. And having the ability to move that second conveyor in and out means that it is completely independent of can size. So it works with slim, sleek, standard, king, jumbo, ROPP cans, can bottles, and even glass bottles. Whether you elect to have a full height DPL 250, a single file around wheels to potentially invest in a depalletizer later, a whale tail to a twist rinse, hand-fed twist rinse or a whale tail, all options are available from Cody Manufacturing. The variety of different price points are directly associated with your labor costs. If you have questions on any of these uh, devices or want to learn more about what is the best for your application and footprint, contact our sales professionals at sales at codymfg.com. I want to thank you for watching this video today and give us a call if you have any questions. Thanks.